Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to... Storage Podcast. Uh-huh. What'd you think of that? That was really lovely. I like that. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Storage Podcast. Today's guest is Sis. She only goes by the name Sis. What's your real name? State your real name for the record. Really? Well, just the name you go by. It's Lee. Lee. And that is not spelled L-E-E because that's not the correct spelling of it. It is L-E-I-G-H. Because she's a French woman. I am. I'm, I'm named after a soap opera star. Who? I don't know, from like, mom used to watch some uh, uh, soap opera back in the 70s, or 60s, I think Days of Our Lives or something. Good God, Days of Our Lives was on in the 60s? Dad named me the C name, and mom named me the L name. Oh! Now, last week I confessed that Libby is not my real name. Okay. Viewers very upset. Wait, I got to turn that blinking light off. That's driving me nuts. I haven't had time to look at last week's podcast, so I don't know what your real name is. Well, nobody watches my podcast, so it's okay. Oh, I watch it. Oh, God, I can't stand this light doing this. Should I cover it up with a something? Well, I could turn it off, but it's switching back and forth. It don't matter. Maybe we should put a blockade in front of it. One moment, please. I think that's static. So, as I do with all my guests, as I do with all my guests, I give my guests the privilege of introducing themselves. So, tell us who you are. Um, Hi, I'm uh, Lee, and I'm 54 years old. (laughs) And I work for a living, and, um, uh, yeah, that's about it. (laughs) Can you hear the laughing? I did. That was kind of good. What about this one? That's too much. Oh, right. That's expecting a lot out of me. So, sis is my older sister, meaning she's quite a bit older than me. I'm young compared to my sis. I'm very young, and when I speak about being elderly, I actually... I mean, she's elderly. I am very elderly. And as you know, Sis and I just found our other Sis. So Sis is no longer the older Sis. I'm the middle child now. And I was always the middle child. And I'm mad as hell that I'm not the middle child. All right, Denture's looking okay. Oh, this is recording. Let's see. Sis and I both have dentures. Uh, Sis has both top and bottom, and I just have bottom. And what we have found in our family is that our teeth were genetically made to not last a lifetime. They were made to last probably 10 to 12 years. I mean, I used to eat white bread, and teeth would be stuck in the white bread when I would pull it out. It would be stuck. Or the teeth would break off. Teeth would break off while eating a sandwich. I remember one time I was at uh, Panera Bread. St. Louis Bread Company. And, it's only St. Louis Bread Co. And one of my molars broke off. Ooh, I bet that hurt. Were you eating one of those hard hard breads? No, it was just regular bread. Oh, okay. Did uh, you sue them? No. Oh, okay. Um, because then they would say, well, clearly, ma'am, your teeth are not genetically designed to last more than 10 years. As someone used to say, your teeth are too tiny to survive. That's right. My teeth were too tiny to survive. My brother-in-law, my sister's husband, or Uncle Chuck, as I called him. I don't know why I called my brother-in-law Uncle Chuck. We got good news, folks, though. Um, got a light bulb. And sis, do you think you could put it in there today? I need a ladder or a step stool. Don't you think you could just stand on that chair and do it? Why did you bring it if you don't have any equipment to put it up there? Well, it, that's the thing. I haven't been able to do it, so I was hoping somebody... Were you going to get on my shoulders? No, I was hoping you could do it. 
With what? Jump up and down. <laughs> I don't know, but it needs a light bulb. I'll stand on that little cardboard box and hopefully it will lift me up there to it. I had that ain't getting done. <sighs> we'll see if there's someone walking around outside that's tall. They, excuse me, can you come change our light bulb for us? We you cannot what, see. You need to bring is one of those um, plungers that you plunge out the poop out of the toilet and like put it in there and reach up there and, and turn, turn it. it. Yeah. Or maybe one of those grabby things where you grab stuff and pull it. Maybe I could put that it. That might break the light bulb though. Well, if I do it very softly. Yeah, that's true. I can't believe you made me remember to bring a light bulb that cannot be installed, and I worried about that all night, that you were going to be forgetting that light bulb. Well, what I will tell you, though, is you're going to have to stay on that microphone or nobody's going to hear you. Okay. Because you are much more soft-spoken than the rest of my guests. Not as soft-spoken as Officer Daniels. Well, if I start talking any type of with volume, you start yelling at me. So I'm trying to be very timid I often soft-spoken. Sis gets the pleasure of being the only person in my life that I yell at. And I appreciate that about her because I can yell at her. Oh, yeah. And Sis likes it. She just goes, okay. It's probably a little bit of a Stockholm Syndrome type situation. I remember that time where um, were we beating you up. I forgot. Or you were beating us up, but usually you were beating us up. And someone, <laughs> we ran in there to, and you said, I said, Dad, or you said, Dad, please beat me up. He said, okay, then, that's all right. Go back in the room. <laughs> Dad didn't care what was going on. We could have ran in there and said, Dad, the house is on fire and all the children are deceased. And Dad would be like, okay. All right, you want a piece of cheese? That was a big snack Dad provided that would, us. That we were highfalutin if we had sliced cheese and tombstone pizza. So what kind of cheese was it? It was uh, Kraft's Kraft? American Singles. So, a good snack for us, maybe if we go to our dad's on a Friday night, dad would get a, a case of Vest Soda. Tombstone Pizza. Tombstone Pizza. Cereals of all kinds. Yes. Apple Jacks were my favorite. Apple Jacks. I never was an Apple Jacks gal. I was more of a Trix gal before they changed the formula. And he used to get it down at that corner mini mart. Right. Yes. He'd go to the corner mini mart. Get cigarettes. Cigarettes. Probably alcohol, honey buns, a case of Vest soda, and then we'd be fighting because he would always get grape, orange, and then the cola, and no Nobody one would drink the cola. cola. So those would be the last ones that were left, right? Right. Or sometimes he'd get the fruit punch. Don't get the fruit punch, Dad. Nobody's drinking it. It's a last resort. I like soda. the root beer. I didn't like And I don't beer. understand cream soda, why any human being would drink cream soda. Well, in my older years, I, <clears throat> I've grown to appreciate cream soda. But as a child, don't put that in the case of soda, Dad. Remember when Dad came home that one time and he's like, okay, you know, like midnight. I'm going to go out and get you guys some food down at the liquor store, you know, mm-hmm. treats and stuff. So we were all happy. And like three hours passed by. We're like, when's Dad coming home? You know, it was only down the block, and then we go in the front room, and Dad's passed out on the floor. And not just passed out, but sprawled. I thought Dad was dead. And I told that story to my therapist one time, and I was laughing. And she sat there stone-faced like this and goes, that's not funny. I go, <laughs> well, he wasn't dead. That's what I go, thing about it's it. It's absolutely hysterical. <laughs> she goes, he was supposed to be your caretaker, and he was passed out drunk. I was the caretaker. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. If you need to scoot it towards you. Now, I don't know if I should do something funny. I don't, because all your other guests have been extremely funny and lively, and and I don't know what to do. Well, you just be yourself. Okay. That's what we like here on the Storage Podcast. We like to be ourselves. Okay. And if they don't like it, that's too bad for them. That's what I've discovered. Anyway, uh, moving on. <laughs> you see how sis changed the subject because it started to get a little traumatic talking about dad being passed out. She- well, no, I don't know how to move on because you're in control of the situation. Yeah. So I'm waiting for you to tell me what to do. No, I'd like to go back uh, and talk more about dad being passed out. 
I remember that time I was down at the sandwich shop. Dad gave us money to go down to the sandwich shop and get some hamburgers and stuff. Super sandwich Super shop? Super sandwich shop there on St. Louis Avenue. And uh, I went to go pay, and someone actually pickpocketed me. And I was, a, <laughs> I was a young girl of like 11 years old. And I had, they, had, they had our food all cooked up, and I couldn't get it. And I went back and told Dad. And Dad, Dad was kind of upset. With I, you? I don't know if he was mad that I got pickpocketed or I didn't, he didn't have any more money for the food, so we just kind of left it down there. Well, the fact that someone in the, what was it, the 80s? Um, yeah, that'd be the 80s. Early 80s, I'd say probably around 81. I'm going to have you go like this because you got a little booger. Oh, oh no. Just pick it off. It's no big deal. Just a little flappy booger. Um... I, I I think it's pretty cool that somebody in the 80s pickpocketed. Because when I think of pickpocketing, I think of, you know, Oliver Twist times back in the in the real early 1800s. I mean, I didn't even feel it. So it was in my back pocket. So how do you know for a fact that you were pickpocketed? I don't know. Maybe he was running away from me. I don't know. I guess I assumed that. You know, I don't know really. It could have just fallen out of my pocket. Maybe that's just a story that I believed all these years. All these years you think yeah. you were pickpocketed, pickpocketed and really yes. you lost it. That's probably what it was. So no, I think I was pickpocketed because someone was yelling or something. I hey, get that. out of her pocket. <laughs> wow, to be pickpocketed. Which pocket did you have? It, it in? was in my back pocket. That was the first mistake. Yes. So what you're telling me is that day I went hungry. Yes, no hamburgers and wax paper for us. Man, those super... Sa- I've talked about those super sandwich hamburgers were so good. They were so delicious. Do you remember the lady's name that used to serve us? No, should I? I, I think it was like Angel or somebody like that, but it was always the same lady. Probably like an Angel or a... Hmm, Debbie. Debbie's a good one. Wanda, maybe. Kathy. And this was a right Teresa. On, maybe Teresa. Yeah. And I always got mayonnaise on my burger, and she always remembered that. I always, that's how our brother still eats it. Cheese and mayo. Our brother is a, is a lively guy. I, you know, I would consider having him on here one day, but he wouldn't say anything. He would just sit here and go, bap, 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 bap. Or he'd go, so you going to eat that burger, or, that's pretty much all my brother says, is, or... Does it keep falling down? No, it's perfectly fine. I was just amazed how how heavy it is. It is very heavy yes. duty. And with these cheap headphones, I figured you would, you know. Cheap have, headphones? He's, I mean, come on. How dare you? I got those And, at and they Walgreens. have earwax of other pe- press, press, uh, past guests on them, too. So Well, it's, didn't even give probably, me an alcoholic wipe to wipe them down it with. It was probably Rafe's earwax. Where should I be looking here? You can look at the camera or look at me. Sometimes for a dramatic effect, I'll go. Like this? Yep. And you can, when my sister takes selfies, uh, so raise your phone in front of your face like you're going to take a selfie. It's odd, The lips are automatic. I've received <laughs> no less than 85,000 selfies from sis, and every one is. I've taken it to the next level since I don't have any teeth. <laughs> So she has probably about two million photos of me with my hair all uh, funky with no teeth on. Going like this. <laughs> and I enjoy it. I enjoy a lot of photos like that. And then she's, she'll say, I'm having a happy day, just like Chris Dale Salmons. That's right. I'm having a happy day. We love Chris Dale Salmons. So His much. name is Chris Dale Salmons, like the yeah. fish? Yeah. Salmons. Well, sa- Salmon. You, it's Chris Dale Salmons. Right, we don't okay. say the L. Oh, his name's Salmons. Salmon or Salmons? It's like the fish, but we don't say the L. Oh, okay. I mean, you can say whatever you want, Thank but I'm going to just keep correcting you. All right, that'd be fine. <clears throat> These earplugs are just really something else. I expected a little bit more. These are like the cheap pair that you get with your free to-go phone from the Best Buy. And they're supposed to last you like one minute. Well, 
I don't like to watch a podcast where people have those giant ones on their head. Well, that, oh, that's true, but I, I'm i sorry. I shouldn't have said something. Maybe I should have each each guest bring their own headphones. Well, I did, and you told me I couldn't use them. Well, you want a Bluetooth. Oh, you can't do the Bluetooth here? I, look at this thing I have here. Oh, that's very good. Howard Stern. Very fancy. So magical. When you hear that sound, when you hear that, what do you think of? Um, I think of the genie that used to be on the television set, and she would twirl around in that bottle, and she had that real good-looking Air Force guy. I think she dated him. I don't remember. Genie in the bottle? I dream of genie. I dream of genie, That's exactly what Harold said, too, or maybe it was Rafe. I'm getting all my guests mixed up, but I just thought about (laughs) the life of the genie. So she basically just had to stay in the bottle until they needed something? Did you see the bottle? No. Oh, my God. It was all fancy. It had, like, a round couch, like a golden couch at the bottom. It was set oh, up. Oh, inside the inside bottle? Inside the bottle, yes. Now, how were they able to get that inside of a bottle? Um, I don't know. How did they get those ships inside those little bottles? I don't know. Maybe uh, it's, it's the same. the same kind of deal. It's the same kind of thing where they have to take a little, like, a tweezer and start putting furniture in there one piece by one piece. I think you have to have like um, like a science degree or something, engineering to do something like that. But it, it always is like a tweezer, isn't it? I don't know that much information about things in a bottle that needs to be built. So they had to disassemble a couch completely mm-hmm. and put it in there. It was a by, round couch. Round couch. So it was at the bottom of the bottle. Yes. So she basically just would hang out in there until the guy wanted something? Yeah, cook dinner, clean the house, something like that. But if she's a, if she's a genie, is she... And I'm not familiar with this show a lot. She if was she, not supposed to use her genie powers. Or was that bewitched? Because Darren did not like um, Samantha to use her powers to clean the house or cook dinner. Wow. Which I thought was lame. Why be a... Bewitched. Why be a genie in a bottle? And she was sitting there steady cooking and cleaning and taking care of, um, what was her name? I liked the girl's name. Uh, I can't remember it now. How Samantha. did he get a hold of the bottle? That, I don't know. That's just, that, I don't remember. I don't know if they set it up. I don't remember. I'm sorry. Huh. And I'm more I, familiar with, like, All in the Family, um... So the guy Sanford and Sons. The guy made her live in a bottle. Yes. Had her come out when he wanted correct. stuff. But then wouldn't let her use her special powers to do the things. That's correct. Yes. So what was the point of her being a genie? Well, I think because she showed her belly button and that was pretty risque back in the day. Oh. I'm gonna have to check this show out because it's not it's not checking out. I don't understand why she couldn't use her special powers. She didn't use it for anything? I really don't remember. I'm so sorry. If you would ask me questions about All in the Family or um, Jefferson's. I love the Jefferson's. Um, I like the Waltons, Little House of the Prairie. I'm a big Little House on the Prairie fan. Yes. What was your favorite episode? Almanzo. Anything with Almanzo in it. What about when Mary went blind in the in the blizzard? Mary got on my nerves. She was always complaining about something. She's blind or somebody got this and she didn't, I didn't, I never liked Mary. Mary was a pain. Mm-hmm. Now little Carrie, I would have liked, probably liked to be Carrie because she didn't really say much. She just kind of hung around. So you would choose to be Carrie or half pack? No, I would have chose to be, what's your name? The store owner's daughter. Nellie. Nellie. And her brother, Albert, because Nellie would tear some people up. And I wanted to be like that. I wanted to be threatening. I wanted people to be scared of me, you know, and not like, don't look me in the eye. But I don't have that kind of. There we go. That's much better. Now, do you you think you wanted to be Nellie because you were bullied on the school bus? Um, and you just imagined yourself defeating your 
bullies by being Nelly? Yes, because Nelly did not put up with anything. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's that's about what I I I zoned in on something on the shelf, and it I just was uh I kind of got starstruck. Zone in, zone in, <laughs> zone in. I was zoning with your neck brace. Um, what was I going to say about uh, Nelly? She did have nice curls. That was one yeah. Of the she good had nice things. curls. She had very nice clothes, and I loved her mom, Mrs. Olson. Mrs. Olson, and I felt so sorry for her dad. Or Mr. Olson. Yes, Mr. Olson. She was low-key abusive to him. Very much so. What was his name? Mr. Nels. Olson. Nels. Yes, but Michael Landon was very handsome. Oh, hands down, handsomest TV guy <laughs> besides uh, John Schneider from Dukes of Hazard. Was he Bo? Who was Bo? I don't know if they're Bo or Luke. I think he was Bo. I was I had some Dukes of Hazard uh, tennis shoe laces that I had bought, mm-hmm. and I thought, oh my God, they were so cool. What shoes did you put? I in? had to put them on, like dress shoes because I didn't have any <laughs> um, tennis shoes at the time. Lace up dress shoes. Yeah, like uh, brown shoes. One was higher than the other because I have a leg shorter than the other. Oh wow, what so, a loser! <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. So you were like. So why don't you have a lift on your feet now? Um, I don't feel like messing with that kind of stuff. Okay. I ain't got time for that. Now, sis does have lip edema like I do. Hers um, hers presented way long before mine. Um, before anybody, you know, anybody, I didn't know what it was. One of her legs is bigger than the other. What? How does your lip edema present to you? Um, like in my pants, presenting, what does that mean? How, what is, what does, so having lipedema, how does it affect your body? It makes my bones hurt, especially my knees and my hips. What about your calves? Calves, which part is that? Is that, that is the, the bottom? bottom of your leg and the back. Yes, but I always thought that was due to not having enough arch support in my shoes. Right. So my calves hurt very bad all the time. And uh, that's probably the worst pain is my calves and the sides of my legs. Yes. I want to just circle back to why you don't have a lifted shoe. Well, they got me the mom got me these shoes and they were rubber bottoms so they could glue the bottom up <laughs> and it was higher. And I remember they were nice shoes. They were like a um, rusty brown color with like the little flap on the top down at the bottom. I mean, those were cool dude shoes. I think they were. I thought they like were. Like a leather? Like no, a leather they're like thing? a suede. But the top part, what was the? It was top, and then it had the, the laces, and then it had that little thing at the bottom right below the lashes, like a little tag. Like a l- suede tag? Like a little suede like tag. Like an embellishment? Yes. And did you ever um, try to tap dance in them? I did tap dance, but that was back in the my younger days. But, I mean, did you ever use those shoes just to pretend tap dance? No, because they were rubber bottoms and I would have tripped and fell. Okay. Yeah. I was a big fan of, as a kid, if I put on a, a dress shoe that had a sort of sound, mm-hmm. love to do uh, a tap dance. Yes, you did. And I was a big fan of uh, performing all kinds of dances, songs, and skits for my sister at all hours of the night. And she would um, never say... Don't do that. Stop. She would always sit there and watch. Whether the dance be five minutes or five hours. I do have patience. She has a lot of patience. And I am I do have patience for some things, but some things I don't. But um, That would be after a long day at the gas <laughs> station at the age of 15 years old. Somehow, sis... Work walking down North Broadway to come home. And I have to bring her a candy bar every night. Every night, she would bring me a Reese's peanut butter cup. And we would lay in bed and listen to Pillow Talk. And Pillow Talk was a, a show on our local station, KZK, but I think it was syndicated. And it was, uh, what was that guy's name? Kurt. No, it was a lady, Delilah, wasn't it? But before it? Delilah, oh, the, the there, guy? Was, there was a oh, guy. Oh, I don't remember him. Kurt. Delilah. What was that guy's name? Pillow Talk with so Fred. Much. I don't remember. It was like Kurt Lander or something like that. No, remember we used to call in all those DJs 
and you were always on the radio every time trying to win prizes and stuff like that what was that contest you went on and you and we were all jacked up listening it, we were at Chesterfield Village Office it was services. a karaoke contest but that when I was a kid I, I didn't try to win contest what I would do is the segment where somebody would call in and they it was funny and they would play it like right before a song uh-huh so that's what I would get on so I'd call and say hello my name is Fred and I'm from St. Louis Missouri <laughs> And I love the song, <laughs> whatever song it was. And I, one day I probably called five times with different voices and got on. And I mean, I was probably 10 or 11. You really did. You had no type of guidance. I mean, you were just running around all in your underwear, just running outside. Well, I mean, what else just, were we supposed to do? I, I know. I used to wear my underwear and run around outside. I know one time I called the radio station and I said, hey there. Can you tell Matt Feldhaus, who was one of my good friends, can you tell Matt Feldhaus that he can eat crackers in my bed anytime? A child. And they played it. Like, what? Oh, poor old Matt Feldhaus. He was so nice. Matt Feldhaus was probably one of my best friends all through grade school. Yes, he was very loyal to you. And I could depend on him because he was always in love with me. And oh, I, so you used him. Well, I, I didn't use him. What I'm saying is, if nobody else liked me, I knew Matt Feldhaus was going to love right. me. Turns out Matt Feldhaus is gay. That's the so, best kind of love. You know, I always just was like, if no dudes like me, at least Matt does. <laughs> and then it turns out he's a gay guy. And he, and he really just liked you for your personality. So that he was just, really true love. It, re- it really was. I know one time he called me, you know, because I was always denying Matt. Denying him what? Being his girlfriend. Okay. Like, you know, they'd be like, you want to go out with me? And I'd be like, no. And where did you go out? You, we went we would nowhere. Go out, you just say you're going out. Yes. So, uh, well, we did go to the movies one time and he did this number on me. <laughs> Was he trying to get in your popcorn? No, he was trying to put it. And I was like, ew, stop. <laughs> Very fresh. I mean, in eighth grade, I do not remember. I Those gals talked about sex and having baby. I didn't even know what sex was in eighth grade. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. And Duran Duran. Eight, no, I was into Menudo in eighth grade. Wow. Duran Duran was high school in Phil Collins. Well, one time Matt called, and mm-hmm. this is how we pranked people. Well, it wasn't even a prank. He was so depressed that I had denied him, right? So he waited for a s- song to be played on the radio. And when that song started playing, he then called me and put the phone on the radio. Oh. <clears throat> and the song was, You're the inspiration. You bring feeling to my life. You're the inspiration when you love somebody, somebody to the end of time. Isn't that from Karate Boy or something? Karate, it might be. Karate Kid. All I know is that was a very romantic song for Matt to be waiting all day to hear on the radio and then send to me. Well, I mean, really, when you were a music fan back in the day, you were very dedicated. Because, you I mean, you would have to call in, ask, you'd call in for like all day to play a song, and then you'd have to wait five more hours for him to play the song, and you're sitting there at the Kate, uh, tape tape recorder ready to press that button right in time, hoping that tape would last before, you know, before the song uh, ended. And now all they do is press a button, they get the song up. That's right. So we truly have come a long have way. Have come, come a long way. And when I hear the word truly now, I think of truly on Sister Wives. Oh, yeah. She's cute. Poor Truly. She was bald for a long time as a child. Why are we talking about kids' heads? We're not. Oh, okay. You told me not to make opinion about people's looks. Well, you know, Sis is older than I am and doesn't always know proper etiquette. And I had to tell her that you have to stop saying stuff about people's bodies. You can't be like, oh, wow, he lost a lot of weight. Like oh, wow, people, you're very thin. I like to tell people if they're good looking. And no, I'm like, I mean, man, you, you are so good looking. 
But you can, but it's you have to kind of feel out the situation. You're like, is this person going well, to I don't not, say I'm I sexually harassing skills. them? Yes, I'm very aware of those type of things now. So, you know, it's all learning. I uh, had a lot of instructional videos from work. About sexual sexually harassing? harassing? Yeah, people. Mm-hmm. If you had a coworker that said something like, hey, Lee, <laughs> butt looks nice, would you feel sexually harassed? Yes, and I, that has happened to me lots of times. Where? What? Speci- well, don't say where, but. Well, I had that stalker when I worked at uh, the Sticks Bear and Fuller, or was it the Dillard's? And I worked in um, teens. So I'd sold prom dresses, teen wear, you know, none of the clothes that I could fit into them. And it was like a really old building, so it had like big columns. And I'd look over and there would be Bruce. You knew your around. stalker's name? Well, yeah, he, he, he loved me. He was up there every day. <laughs> and uh, peeking around the corner, so I would go to the other side of the teen section and he'd be getting behind another uh, column, just a staring, daring at me. Why was his name? Why did you know his name? Because he went to Dad's bar. And why didn't Dad tell him, "Hey, stop"? Uh, well, I didn't stalking. tell Dad these things. Dad did. Dad had other problems. Did you say, hey, Bruce, get the hell out of here? (laughs) No, I had no idea what was going on. I just thought he was some kind of weirdo. (laughs) Whatever. He he spent the bus money to get down there, so I thought, well. (laughs) Let him hang out. He he could just hang out. He never approached me. He just would stare at you? Yeah, he would just stare at me. He would never talk to me ever. He kind of looked like Beavis with the blonde hair (laughs) and the high forehead. (laughs) So you... Uh, let's go through the jobs that you've had. Okay. Your first job was what? Gas station. And we did not have a ca- uh, money-making cashier drawer, whatever that thing is called. I had to use the calculator and add everything up. Like, I want that Snickers bar, that pack of cigs. You know, and 15 years old, I'm just not thinking, <laughs> was I allowed to legally sell <laughs> cigarettes? I got in trouble one time because... Um, these people down the street, um, it, hey, we don't like these kind of cigarettes. It's a brand new case, and we want to exchange them for a um, pack of cool 100s. I forgot what it was. I'm thinking, well, there's no harm in that. So I, you know, switched to Rude, put them up there. They didn't have no tax things on it. Oh, man. They called me after school one day and asked me why I was, because um, that was illegal to be selling <laughs> cigarettes with no tax markings on the bottom. You should have said, hey, it's illegal for me to be selling any kind of cigarettes. Yes. And I remember when one time, I, I did like to guess, I mean, that really woke me up to the real world because I was sitting in my little booth and, you know, people would pull up, guys would pull up and Oh, next to the, yeah. and I just kind of like looked the other way because I mean it couldn't go anywhere, so I basically just had to turn around. So it was those booths were just a had real a door. small booth. Yeah, it had like three <laughs> windows. You know, the front with the drawer, and oh god, I got to tell you about this one story. But yeah, okay, yeah. This one guy used to come up there all the time. Hey, baby, give me a pack of what I am cool, <laughs> but. He would always have a snotty nose, and he would only pay in change. And as he was putting the change in the drawer, his oh. the mucus would be dripping from his nose into the drawer. <laughs> I had to, like, pick around it. But I oh. loved, hey, baby, give me a pack of what I am. Cool. <laughs> so it had the drawer that you would have to slide yes, out. Yes, that's exactly right. Yes. Did anyone ever try to stick their hand in there at you? Um, I don't remember. And did you have a rock in there to put on the bills so the bills didn't fly away? No, we were not that advanced. But what we did, if anybody paid in credit cards, I would have to take that credit card and I'd have to run it through like this thing that go, glided. Yeah, I'd have to call <laughs> the credit card company, read them the phone number or read them card number and ask them, you know, what are they buying? How many gallons are they buying? And if they did not approve it, they say, I'm sorry, you have to take that customer's card away. <gasps> I'm 15 years old. <laughs> I'm like, 
<laughs> I don't want to take their card away. So I and so I go back to I would turn around. Say I'm sorry, sir, or ma'am. I have to take your card away. That's what the people on the phone said. <laughs> and boy, they would just call me every. You effing blah, 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 blah. Give me back my damn. I'll meet you after work and get my card you're stealing from me. And I had to, like, cut it up in front of them and stuff. It was ridiculous. Now, looking back, mm-hmm. I would not I would have just gave it back to him. Because you're not morally or legally obligated. I did not. For I your had, own safety. I had no idea what was going on. That was your first job, the Amico. I remember it on yes. Broadway. We sold a lot of penny candy. <clears throat> You had penny candy in that oh, little yes. booth? Now or laters. Now and laters. Um, I'm trying to think of what the other big ones were. Uh, what's those ones that are hot and they're green? Raleigh Rogers? Uh, Roger, Jolly Ranchers? Jolly Ranchers. Um, those were only a penny? Yeah, those were a penny. Good God. So you worked at the gas station. What was after the gas station? Do you uh, need a, a little Tisha? Yes, please. I got some It nice is nice napkins. and cool and... These are nap. These are very rough on my skin. Well, too bad, sucker. Yeah. Okay. So I did there. Um, I worked at Sizes Unlimited in downtown St. Louis. <laughs> so what I would do is get off the school bus. I'd run down to Salisbury Street and catch the bus to downtown uh, to go to Sizes Unlimited. It was two floors of plus size fashions. Back in like 1982. And that is, actually, I was in eighth grade because I bought my outfit because I was like the Virgin Mary or something. May Queen. I was May Queen. So I bought my outfit from there. And I had my candy shoes on. So you worked at Sizes Unlimited, which at the time, that's unheard of, a plus size store. That is correct, yes. They could have picked a better better name, though. Sizes Sizes Unlimited. I think they went to like size 32. And then after Sizes Unlimited, did you go then to the Limited? Oh, I wasn't. I feel like you went, maybe you just bought no, a lot of clothes there. I would not. I was too fat to work at the Limited. After Sizes I Unlimited, did, you went to? Well, I went to Famous and Bar. I went to Sticks, Bear, and Fuller. Um, I had a lot of jobs. I'm trying to think. <clears throat> um, I babysat. For money. You were always working. Yeah, I was always working. Bringing home the cash. And what did you do with your money? Well, mom made me buy my own clothes and stuff if I wanted anything. Oh, okay. So. That's what, that's you were, what, did you spend them on concert friend, tickets too? Yes, Phil Collins. I bought my, but that's when you used to stand out for days out in front of. Ticket the, man. Famous in bar. Yep. Famous and bar if I got, but I always went to the Keel Opera House and stood outside. So we would have to, if you wanted tickets to a show, you had to go to the place and stand there. For days. For days. Camp out. So what row seat did you get for Phil? Um, well, I was in the very back, but when I worked at Sizes Unlimited, someone, some thieves came in the door and our lockers were downstairs and they stole my Phil Collins ticket. Oh! So Pam still had her Phil Collins ticket. So I went down there crying and carrying on. Tell him to please let me in. It was not my fault. I said, we can catch the criminal. He'll be sitting there in the seat with my <laughs> Phil Collins ticket. <laughs> and uh, The criminal. So they gave me like a voucher to get in. I don't know what they expected me to do. I was like, so... Then here was this guy sitting there in my seat, and Pam sat down, and I'm just kind of, I can't be on the steps because they said I was a fire hazard, so I just was kind of <laughs> walking around looking through the doors, you know. Now, Pam should have given you her ticket. Why? Because everybody knows you're the biggest Phil Collins oh, fan she was on an Earth. Ex- Well, she was a Bruce Springsteen big fan. I hate Bruce Springsteen, but. Uh, Whoa, hate is no, extreme. No, I don't. I'm sorry. I dislike his music. I'm sure Bruce is How a How could nice you not fellow. like his music, sis? Born in the USA. I was born in the USA. I was born in the USA. I, I mean, how can born. you not like that? It makes your head want to explode. And you went to a Prince concert too, didn't you? I did. Tina and I went to a Prince concert and we had matching leather pants. <laughs> leather pants from Ventures. 
Uh, and we each had matching sweaters with the V in the back, which were very stylish. She had purple. Of course, I wanted to wear purple for Prince, but I didn't get to wear it. I got a yellow one. And Mom dropped us off at the um, Hardy's restaurant there right in front of the Checker Dome. Shout out to the Checker Dome. It's That's not right. there anymore. So we went there to the concert, and then Mom picked us back up at night. I saw New Kids on the Block there. That was a long time ago, man. Wow. That was actually the last Blues game I saw was back was back When then. they were at the Checker Dome? Checker Dome, yeah. That thing looked uh, like it was never up to code. Yes, that, that's what was so great Probably about why it. they tore it down. Do you remember uh, a gentleman in our neighborhood who um, walked around and sold pillows? Pillow Steve. Steve the Pillow Man. Steve the Pillow Man. There's always somebody, I think everybody has somebody in their childhood, they're like, what was that guy doing? Steve walked around and sold pillows. And he put the pillows in his pants. He stuffed his (laughs) pants... Because he couldn't carry around all the pillows, so he had, like, these stretchy pants on, and he put them inside his pants. And he looked like, you know, looks like my legs with the side bombs Incredible, the Hulk. Well, he hung them, like, from a stick, you know, like they do at the circus <laughs> with the, the fuzzy animals and stuff, you know. <laughs> these old pillows, dude. That, yeah, they were, like, hung to a stick. Or sometimes he'd get one of them grocery carts from National... And push him in, in the <laughs> national cart. That is an entrepreneur, though. He thought, what business can I do that people need? And it was selling pillows. I don't think I ever bought a pillow from that poor fella. I think mom and dad bought those feather pillows from him. Oh, really? So huh. he must have been doing a good job because I know he walked around forever with pillows. He did. And he. I think he was an alcoholic before I knew he was an al- knew about alcoholic because his nose was really red. But I guess if I had to sell pillows on the streets, like door-to-door salesmen, I would probably drink a lot, too. He might have just had rosacea. Well, it was really bad rosacea. Steve the Pillow Man. And we made up a song about him because he had a, a hat that... He wore two hats. He had a two. He had two bills on the one hat. No, he had two hats on. <laughs> one on backwards and one on frontwards. <laughs> and then he goes spend his money at Meister's. And Meister's was a restaurant that my friend Rhonda's dad owned. Oh, we loved that place. We were highfalutin if we got to go there and eat dinner. Steve the Steve. Let's see. It was the, here's a the song. You remember it? No, I'm blanking out. A funky Steve. Uh-uh. A, a funky, funky Steve. Steve. Uh-uh. Oh, with the Steve two-way hat, hat and, and the, the funky, funky plaid pants. pants. Funky, funky Steve. Steve. Uh-uh. A funky, funky Steve. Steve. That's right. He wore plaid dirty he wore pla- pant. Yeah, plaid stretchy polyester dress pants. <laughs> and he would carry the pillows in his pants. <laughs> Who would buy a pillow that was inside of a man's pants? Poor guy. I don't know. I never bought a pillow from them. If you, in the 80s, grew up in Hyde Park, Missouri, Hyde Park, St. Louis, and know Steve the Pillow Man and what he was all about, I need to know. There's got to be somebody out there that knows Steve the Pillow Man. I love Steve the Pillow Man. I mean, come on. The guy was working hard. He wa- Ain't nobody's going to go out now to door-to-door and sell pillows. And nobody. Hey, where did he get these pillows from? I, you know, <laughs> there was no mail order back then, so he had to physically go to a store and buy pillows and mark them up. I just think it's great because I, I see people out selling, you know, I've seen people maybe sell a watch. The snow cone guy was my favorite. The car that would come down the road and the kids would be sitting in the back of the trunk selling snow cones. <laughs> the parents would be driving. <laughs> And the kids would be sitting in the back of the trunk, you know, like at a big old, like, 1972 Oldsmobile. And the kids would be in the trunk with the ice cooler and the uh, snow cone juice. And you'd run up there and you'd get you a cup with some ice and snow cone juice, like for a quarter or something like that. Did they have the spoon where it made it round at the top? We're talking about a kid sitting in a trunk. Do you really (laughs) think that he had a, a spoon? Because if I'm eating a snow cone, it has to be round at the top. This kid had a cup 
and he sat in the back of a trunk <laughs> while his parents drove him around the, the neighborhood. There's a lot in our childhood. There's a lot of child labor, and I'm glad there's child labor laws now because no child should have to ride in the back of a car selling a snow cone. <laughs> Sis, they sold snow cones out of a car. Well, yeah, money. Do you remember any other figures from our our neighborhood? I was just thinking, I liked, uh, well, of course, we like the Tasty Freeze guy. Yes. And if you got a tamale, if mom and dad gave us money for the tamale, that was a big night. Tamales were good. And you would hear the you would hear them like over, we were on 19th Street, so you could hear the ice cream guy on 21st Street. So we'd all be running up to, it was always right in front of Teresa's house. So we'd stand there and wait because we want to be Why first in line. Why didn't it ever come down to our house? Because it was right in the middle. I and see. he wanted to be fair. And I mean, he served chili and tamales and ice cream, and he had it going on. And during the day, he would sell downtown. And then at night, he would sell in North St. Louis. I wonder if him, the Tasty Freeze guy, and Steve the Pillow Man could have gotten together and had like a ice cream slash pillow business. Yeah. And I, then I, Steve I, I, would would be cover more ground. Well, s- hygiene would probably be the problem with Steve. I don't know if he could have been around all that food. Their rating would have went down. Maybe that's why we call them uh, funky plaid pants because I don't. I don't remember him specifically being dirty, but I guess they were because I created the... Well, he was a hard worker. That's why he was dirty. Yeah, he was walking all over town selling pillows. Right. The world's first door-to-door pillow salesman. I don't think he smoked. I do kind of remember that. The funky plaid pants. Funky Steve. Uh-uh. A funky Steve with the two-way hat and, and the, the funky, funky plaid, plaid pants. pants. Funky, funky Steve. Steve. Uh-uh. A uh-uh. funky, funky Steve. Steve. Uh-uh. I'm trying to think if we had songs for I remember, and I do, I think this is why I have not had the greatest luck, because Art, I used to call him Art the Fart. Art the Fart. And that was really terrible in me, and I remember his mom came down and yelled at me that I called him that. Mm. I felt really bad. But he had, like, his nuts cut off or something. He had, like, one, one nut. Oh, no, was that another kid? One nut. There was a kid who got one nut cut off. Oh, God, what was that kid's name? One nut something. One nut Nelson? Yeah, something. Well, yeah. Art the Fart. Poor guy. Art the Fart used to, and I'm not going to say Art the Fart, Art used to take spray paint uh, cans and get the marbles out. I remember that specifically. What would you? What would he do with the marbles? I have no idea. That was a big thing, like, oh, we're going to cut this open and get the marble out. Huh. They had a marble collection. We used to ride our bikes a lot. That's a lot of stuff we did. You and Art? No, me and Norman and the Wolf Boys. Now, Norman has been on my Facebook the last couple of years. I found him. I always liked Norman. Oh, I love Norman. There was a lot of kids in our neighborhood that were cool. Norman cool the kids. Dorman. I was What so they in call love you, him. Lee the Flea? Lee the Flea, that was who peed on me. Lee the Flea who peed, peed on, on me. me. Yeah, now, was... did you ever actually pee on anyone? No, I did not pee on anyone. Okay. So they just were saying that there wasn't That's really... correct. I don't know why they said those things. Something to do. I think people were mean to you because, first of all, you had ADHD. Well, and I was fat, and I was like the only fat kid in school. Right. You were. There weren't other fat people at that time, so uh, easy target for them. I remember this one time. It was really, back in the day, you did not have air conditioning in school. So you'd just be sweating it up. I went, man, I am burning up hot. And the kid next to me, I'm not going to say his name, said, I thought I smelled bacon cooking. Oh. <laughs> now, while that is a hilarious roast, uh, not <laughs> funny that he did that. But he's the same kid who took a pencil and stabbed a kid in the top of the hand. Oh, nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we grew up in a rough area. It was it was rough, but also we'd be out. It was at very entertaining. All hours of the night. No, I stayed home. I did not go out at night. You went to work. Well, I went to work. But I didn't go out lollygagging around the neighborhood. You had the fun. Well, we weren't doing nothing. We were just running around the neighborhood, going and sitting at a gazebo. 
Yeah, that I'm was doing our that. big fun. Just running up and down the street, going in people's houses, and <laughs> and people always came in our house for some reason. Yeah, then when I used to steal, because yeah. I walked in on them quite a few times. I'd come home from school, and people would be stealing stuff, and I'd run out screaming, <laughs> and they'd be hightailing out there with our new VCR that dads bought for us for Christmas. And that's back when the VCR just came out. Yeah, that was like the big time. Because we had, before that, we had a, a, what was that one with the big record player looking thing? Record player? Uh, no, it was the video one, but it looked like a big record player. Hmm. Laser disc. We had a laser disc. We never had a laser disc. We had a laser disc and it got hmm. stolen. Dad no. bought us the laser disc too. I don't think so. We had a laser disc. Because we only had like three actual laser discs. It's like, wow, we can't actually buy these anywhere. There's no movies to watch. That it's is true. That, that is true. I mean, there was actually no movies to, on VHS tapes either. And you worked at Camelot Music too. I remember that at the moment. I did, but th- I got fired from that. Why? Well, I left my job at Sizes Unlimited because the new mall was opening up downtown, the center. They St. called Louis it Center. Yes. And uh, I think they just needed bodies. Uh, I wasn't like one of those cool folks who had like jeans and like cool shirts on and knew all about music. I knew absolutely nothing about music, but like (laughs) Duran Duran or Phil Collins. So when the hype all went down, uh, they got rid of me. So you probably just laid off. Fired is extreme. No, they fired me because they weren't going to pay me any type of, you know, reparations or whatever you call them reparations yeah um did you ever work at peaches record store no i was never cool enough to work at peaches that was a pretty far bus ride i had to take like three buses to get to peaches whoa the one on hampton one on hampton yes uh are you getting cold right now because i'm freezing uh no i have three layers on well you're doing pretty good for um your attention because sis was just diagnosed with adhd how many years ago not that long i think it was 50 49 or 50 uh suffered her whole life with it nobody ever took the time to be like hey something's going on with this girl she can't focus she can't read she got bad grades she's skipping school she's talking nonstop. i don't i don't even remember even going to class i just remember (laughs) running in the halls i stayed in the bathroom a lot um comb my hair I like to comb my hair. I went and sat in other people's classrooms with my friends. <laughs> and no one ever said nothing. I just sat in there. And you're just hey, like, rah, 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 I didn't rah, have rah. no book or nothing. <laughs> I just, I never took books home ever. Never. And why didn't anyone ever say anything? Why did mom or dad ever be like, oh, I never you, told dad or mom. Do you, why did Because I mean, I got suspended a whole bunch of times. They never knew. And it's, it's weird because even now, I think females, women, are underdiagnosed with it. I don't know why. It was that, oh, that's just her. That's just her. And you're going, (laughs) I don't know what made me think of, remember when dad had that house and he had the shower in the basement? Oh, God. And I was taking the shower. (laughs) A lot of stuff happened to us as kids. And then... All those grown men come walking downstairs, and I'm taking it. I think it was like a green hose just basically hung up from the ceiling. Was it? It was a nice shower down there, though. Yeah, but there was no curtains. It was a full basement, and you stood on the drain. And they just stood there, and I'm like, hello. And they're just still standing there. I'm thinking, well, this is, I don't think this is right. This is very odd. Yeah, my dad lived with a, a, a older guy, Jim. What was his last name? Can we say it? Herzog. Herzog. And, uh... Hi, is your daddy home? Yeah, he would call and ask for daddy. be like, hi, is your daddy home? At the time, <laughs> we knew it was creepy. And now, looking back, I'm like, whoa! Jim Herzog, calm down. <laughs> is your daddy home? <laughs> yeah, this is my daddy. Oh, it's so creepy. But he was a nice man. He was. Yes. But, yeah, we were thinking about our childhood. We were put in a lot of weird situations. I remember when the Uncle Bear Man, and I never realized it, he would take me on his runs. I mean, it just dawned on me a few years ago. 
why? I'm like, why is he always taking me to these houses and I'm having to sit outside in the car for like hours? It's because I was like his, I guess, backup. If someone, well, I have a small kid. You're not going to arrest me for. <laughs> and I used to be sitting all out there uh, in the vehicle while he went in the house and did for like hours. We can't stand our Uncle Bear. And how he <clears throat> made me drive him home. And I was like eight years old in the truck and he was yelling at me the whole time what you can't drive don't you know how to drive <laughs> and i'm like i'm eight years old he was like pushing the pedal and i'm because he was so high oh for he God's couldn't sake. Uh, get us home didn't grandma make you drive too one time or you told grandma that you could drive yeah i told well i wanted to drive i was interested in driving <laughs> and we were grandma had a yellow um, nova com- nova no. i thought it was a nova grandma had a yellow comet ford Com. no Oh, God, what was it? It wasn't a Comet. It was a Nova, wasn't it? No, it was not. It was a, um, was it a Comet? Oh, my God, I can't believe it. I know cars. Um, well, she she loved this car so much, she actually bought two of them, and they were both yellow. So I'm sitting there, and Grandma's like, man, I'm tired, because I think we were driving. Oh, she picked us up in Jackson to go to her house for the summer. So I'm like, well, I'll drive, Grandma, if you're tired. She's like, okay. I mean, I think I was like nine or ten years old. <laughs> Jesus. Christ. And she's just sitting there. <laughs> oh, we were driving to Jackson because I remember getting off on the 45 bypass, and it's like really you have to like really turn and like go over to this road. And I was doing no brakes, <laughs> and I pulled in this gas station and almost plowed right through the gas station door. And she's like yelling, "Put on the brakes! Put on the brakes!" <laughs> <laughs> a nine-year-old driving like this why what's wrong with the adults in our lives <laughs> well remember when you used to sit on we used to sit on laps and drive cars and think nothing of it right let me see your phone i gotta show some of these pictures we're getting close to the end sis oh, it's gone by so fast <clears throat> i want to show uh some of the pictures, I showed some pictures last on the last podcast. It was good. Now, they're not going to see it now. I'm going to place it up there. This picture is um, a picture of us before we went on the new Kids on the Block cruise. So, we went on the new Kids on the Block cruise, and we were on the reality show. So, the top two pictures are the day that we left, and the bottom two are the day we got back. And it was three days later. But we looked... It was horrible. It w- we yeah, it was difficult. Yes. We worked very hard. Well, yes, we did, but sis worked hard most of the time. I mean, you know, cuz they were really they didn't care about me being in the show. But uh, the only thing I really remember about that we didn't get any sleep and we ate a lot of toast and drank Coca-Colas. And I thought that one time, because you were upset about something, I thought you jumped off the boat. And She thought I jumped off the boat and, and unalived myself because I was upset yeah. because they made me do a scene oh, yeah. where I had to talk out loud. So, yeah, you were sitting on a bench or something. So they, they had me, you know, pretending I was writing jokes. Well, I was. I was like, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm doing it and doing it. And he goes, well, um, you need to say something. I go, I'm by myself. He goes, well, just talk out loud like you're talking to yourself. So they wanted me to say, um, does this <laughs> joke sound good? Will Joey like this joke? Will Joey like this joke? <laughs> Which I didn't want to do, and I was mad. So I was mad, and I, I went off. But at that time, Johnny Knight from the New Kids asked me to go swimming with him on the top deck. Yeah, you're up there having a good old time sliding on the water slide and having food and stuff. I'm down there starving in the room thinking you're dead and I'm running around the um the ship up and down the stairs it reminds me like a Titanic and I'm running down the stairs screaming where's my sis where's my sis and some thank god someone came up to me I just saw her a little while ago and I just collapsed because I was so happy that you weren't dead now I was pretty upset about having to do that scene but not upset enough where I would have jumped over the side of a boat well, I just, we were very tired, and I didn't know how. Yeah, we were not okay. I was actually so tired that I started to have 
auditory hallucinations, which I'd never had before. I started yeah, I was very hearing exhausted. weird things, and and but it was a fun experience. But we didn't get a lot of sleep. More on that later. There's a picture of Sis and her fancy bike. Oh, with the banana seat. Uncle Buddy Ray bought me that bike. And is that the same Buddy Ray that sold uh, Buddy Ray's perfume? That's exactly right. BR549. Do you have any comments about Buddy Ray's perfume? Because I, when I talked about it, it was just here by myself. Well, it it seemed very disturbing the way that you were talking about it. It, and it is was, disturbing. No, it was more like kid fun. You know, farts and poop smells, you know. That's really what it was about. But I did mainly the belly button. Oh, that's even so, worse. I'd rather... A, a lot of the Buddy Ray's perfume came from the belly button, from my belly button. <laughs> Both of them are disgusting. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I don't want to smell Buddy Ray's perfume from anywhere on anybody. Or Toe body. Jam. Toe Jam was another big one. Good God, Toe Jam. You're able to procure enough Toe Jam to... Put a smile I used to run around. I had no shoes. I used to run barefooted most of the places. Now, it's t- if see, you I notice have, on that bike, I have no shoes on. Toe jam is on is between your toes, correct? That's correct. Okay. Yes, and it was usually dark. It was like dirt. Yeah. Let me see here. Yep. No shoes, just riding on the bike. Yeah. And those bikes usually had those little spiky things. So how could I was you tough. stand it? I even rode my skateboard barefooted. Did you have one of those tiny skinny no, skateboards? No, I had a fabulous skateboard it was red like a plastic and it was clear you could see through it and the wheels had like uh glitter and glitter them. yes and i the, was that was big time the last one i like to show is this one because i like your hairstyle oh the bangs they love to take me to that photo studio and have Who? grandma grandma hank and buddy ray they go down to the local department store i forgot what it was called and they made me get these ridiculous outfits and then go take my pictures at them and you know you have to wait like two years for your pictures to be developed and stuff like that and i don't know how we started this but both of our grandparents so we had grandma hank and grandma hank's dog dog boxer so we would call her grandma hank and then grandma honey was because she had a dog named Honey. Because obviously we could not, we didn't, we couldn't look at him and tell the difference. <laughs> we did so it was always Grandma Hank or Grandma Honey. But then it got confusing because Grandma, because Honey died, and then she got Candy Cane. But I never really called her Grandma Candy Cane. I we always called Grandma her Grandma Honey. Honey. Yeah, and Candy Cane was a fr- uh, Boston Terrier. Boston Terrier. Who had the most horrifying breath of any dog. And he bit me in the face once. I was petting him and he bit me right below the eye. And and Candy Cane also had messed up teeth. So I'm not, I'm not sure how... Candy Cane teeth. Candy Cane was always like... <laughs> it's like, whoa! <laughs> and Grandma loved that dog. She'd flip him over at night. And her and my pop would sit there and uh, pick fleas off of them God. with the tweezers instead of getting them flea medication. It was much cheaper just to pick the fleas off the the dog while it was laying on its back. Our family is disgusting. While we watched um, Hee Haw. <laughs> <laughs> on the idiot box, as my grandma yes, would call it. Yes, I loved Hee Haw. Well, Hee Haw, mother effers. <laughs> Can I have a piece of your candy? Sis brought candy from I brought a little candy. candy for Sis. I brought us some delicious butterscotches. Sis likes the worst candy on the and planet. And I brought us the Tootsie Rolls that are flavored, not chocolate. Like we've got lemon, fruit. And she keeps trying to pawn them on off got everybody. vanilla. She's like, would you like a... Well, I can't believe no one wants these. These are fruity delicious. Fruity Tootsie Rolls. And the orange one. The orange one is so delicious. Sis likes the worst candy. She likes that stupid hard candy that is 50 years old. She likes... I won't eat circus peanuts. She... Bought something yesterday called Chuckles. Oh, Chuckles are delicious. Never heard of a Chuckles. There's five flavors, and they're like little jelly. I like little jelly candies with like little sugars on them. Shit, we better get out of here. What time We're it is? We're perfectly fine. We're, We're not on a time schedule. Gabby's here, and Gabby wanted to go to... Um, the trampoline park. Trampoline park, and I'm not going. Tell you that right now. 
I like doing things like that. And not me. I'm the Chuck E. Cheese, Six Flags, um, kind of aunt, and sh- Libby is the uh, creative, pretend play, and educates, educates kids. Well, speaking of pretend play, I'm starting a new seg- segment on this podcast where somebody plays an air instrument. And Sis grew up uh, playing the flute. The bonophone. And the bonophone. Upright organ. And... I played the flute for one day and decided it was too hard, so I didn't do it. But I think that I'm going to play this song that doesn't actually have a flute in it. Mm-hmm. But I want you and I to have a flute, air flute playing competition. Okay. So when you when I put the song on, just pretend you're playing the flute. And we're going to have a contest to see who wins. Okay. All right, you ready? Yes. Get your flute ready. That's what I said. I said, ladies and gentlemen, I said there's no flute in this song. Oh, I forgot you said that. Pretend there's no flute. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, that'll be it for our first annual flute air flute contest. Uh, Say who you liked in the comments. Well, do they like Bonaphone better or Upright Organ? Upright Organ. I used to kill with that joke. Well, yeah, that's back, back in when, fourth grade. I used to kill with that fourth joke. Fourth grade. One time, uh, me and Rafe talked about this. One time at a um, Catholic school talent show, Sis played the theme song to MASH on her flute. Yep, and Kim and, um, I forgot, Sabrina sang back up. Those who was hard is painless. It kinds of many changes. What a horrible song for an eighth grader to be singing. Well, I uh, I think because I could actually play it. It was that or like a Christmas song or something. So <laughs> remember when that my favorite because we had talent shows every year. My favorite was the guy. He did this fantastic act and no one could believe he could do it he tap danced sitting in a chair wow he got up there and his legs were flailing and just tap dancing away and everybody was laughing at him and they were telling us to be quiet because it was serious he was really he thought that was a nice skill to have who was it i don't remember he was in a different grade. I do remember that. What's wrong with sitting down and tap dancing? Well, I think because it requires no skill whatsoever. <laughs> so, and this guy thought he really, you know. It's a talent show. You're showing your talent. <laughs> Nobody won as far as I don't think. Everybody <laughs> kind of just did their stuff. I Yeah, and it was very scary. I know that me and uh, Miss Alice had the girls do, um, we all wore, you remember jams, those like Hawaiian shorts. Oh yes, those were. Yeah, I didn't never had those. And we stood in a semicircle, and instead of singing um, "California Girls," we sang "California Guys." <laughs> the East Coast, ba, da, la, da, 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 and a nun da, was singing da, da, about, and a nun uh-huh. who, and Miss Alice was our music teacher, but she was going through to be a nun, and then got. Smart, I guess, and decided not to be a nun. I did not know that. Yeah, she never did become a nun. Miss Alice. Huh. Those who was I had Mr. Weedman who helped us with that. We love Mr. Weedman. He wore his corduroy pants and his Levi shoes. Every day. I'm about to piss my pants. Oh, I'm sorry. We need to... Is there anything you want to say before we end it? Because I am going to pee in my pants. Let's see here. No, probably not. Follow her um, on TikTok. She wants TikTok followers well, so bad. Well, I want to go live. I don't know why I want to go live, but I do want to go live. Um, and I want to give a shout out to Phil Collins and Genesis. Any more shout outs? Um, you have, if if you're going on the lines that Harry did last week, he did about fifteen. So you about have about 15. fourteen. I'd like more. to give a shout out to that five dollar bag at Wendy's. It was a lot of food for five dollars. 
What was it called again? Five dollar snack or five dollar sack? Um, biggie was the five dollar biggie bag. Maybe. Yeah, five dollar biggie, biggie, biggie bag. Biggie, 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 can't you see? Um, let's see. I'd like to give a shout out to. Um, hmm. I don't really know a lot of people. Um, hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, she doesn't I'd know like who she sh- wants to get a shout out I'd to. I'd like to give a shout out to that board with all the buttons on it. Well, shout out to the board with the buttons, ladies and gentlemen. Any more? Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to... Hmm, thinking of people. Ladies uh, and gentlemen, <laughs> think of people! <laughs> like to do a shout out to Keith Hernandez from the 1982 Cardinals World <laughs> Series winners. One more, I'd folks. like to give a shout out to Brett Hall from the Blues from back in the day. I'd like to give a shout out to, hmm, let's see here. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, what is, um, I like to get Faux Grand. I do miss Faux Grand. They were a fantastic restaurant, Vietnamese restaurant down in St. Louis. The song started over. That's how long your shout outs were. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Faux, I had a dream about Faux Grand the other night. They shut down. Faux Grand is fantastic. It was the best Vietnamese food I'd ever had. And they were so nice. Very nice. And the owner was so good looking. But I never made observations about his body just that he was very handsome he was handsome he's very handsome okay we gotta go because i gotta go pee oh thanks for joining us uh, folks uh, tune in next do time we do this maybe she'll come again on another podcast probably this summer after tour thanks for joining me sis shout out to you sis huh. wow thank you thanks for the lovely day sis Lovely day. It was a lovely, lovely day. We are having a lovely day. You smell like poopy pants. Uh. Is your daddy home? <laughs>